kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In this video, we will talk about polarity of covalent compounds and how their properties depend upon the polarity. But before that, what are the different types of covalent compounds? Let's find out more about polarity because based upon polarity, we have two different main classes of covalent compounds. One of them is called as non-polar covalent compound and the other is called as polar covalent compound. What do we mean by a non-polar molecule? For those molecules, the central atom has no non-bonded or unshared electrons, which means when we write the compound formula ABX, this X will not exist for a non-polar molecule. There will not be any unshared pair of electrons. And second condition could be the central atom will be surrounded by exactly same atoms. So the molecule will look same throughout. Or we can also say the molecule is symmetrical around the central atom. Let's find out how a polar molecule could be identified. In this, the central atom will have non-bonded pair of electron. So in ABX formula, we will have some value for X. This will always exist. Also, the central atom could be surrounded by different atoms. And that makes the molecule unsymmetrical around the central atom. Let's find out more information how to identify polar and non-polar molecules. So the very simple test we can do is look at the molecular structure and ask the question to yourself, does the molecule look same all the way around central atom? If your answer is yes, then molecule is non-polar. If your answer is no, then the molecule is polar. Let's look at these two structures. This structure is carbon tetrachloride CCl4 and this structure is CHCl3. And we need to identify which one is polar and which one is non-polar. Let's look at these molecules closely again. The first structure CCl4 has central atom carbon and all the remaining atoms are chlorine. So all four sides of the atom, they have exactly same element. That means the molecule will be symmetrical. And if it has symmetry around the central molecule, that makes it non-polar molecule. Let's look at the second formula and which is CHCl3. We have central atom as carbon atom and then we have three chlorines and one hydrogen atom. So we can ask a question, does it look same all around the central atom? Mm -mm, it doesn't. We have three elements, chlorine and the fourth one is hydrogen. So the bond between carbon and hydrogen is different than the bond between carbon and chlorine. Since the molecule looks different around the central atom, it is asymmetrical. And if it is asymmetrical, molecule around central atom that makes it a polar molecule. There is one more test for polar molecule. We can always check if there is a lone pair of non-bonded unshared pair of electrons on central atom and if it is there it will be a polar compound. Okay, let's talk about diatomic molecules. In diatomic there is a word di that means two. So all these molecules will have two atoms of that element. So let's find out which are those. Those are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. And there's an easy trick to remember all these diatomics by this simple phrase. I bring clay for our new house and this will make it clear to you 
that's iodine, that's bromine, chlorine, fluorine, oxygen, then that's nitrogen, and this is hydrogen. Now, will these diatomic molecules polar or nonpolar? Let's find out. Chlorine is written as Cl2. That means we have a bond between each of the chlorine atoms. So, there is delta electronegativity, which we write as delta En, which is a difference between the electronegativity value for each of the chlorine. So, when we subtract that, it is equal to 0. Same way for any diatomic, whatever is the value, delta En will be always equal to 0. That means the bonds will be nonpolar and that makes the compound also nonpolar. Let's compare the properties of polar and nonpolar covalent compounds. The very first thing, polar compounds will have high melting point and boiling point, whereas nonpolar covalent compounds will have relatively low melting points and boiling points. Most of the polar compounds will be liquids at room temperature, whereas most of the non-polar compounds, they will not be solid, but they could be rather liquids or gases. And as example, guys, N2, Cl2, O2, all these are non-polar and they are gases. Both polar and non-polar, they will not conduct electricity because there is no flow of electrons among these molecules. These exist as molecules, not as ions. They will not ionize at all. And the last one is about solubility. This is quite important property. Typically, we get polar compounds soluble in water and also many other polar solvents. But it will be insoluble in non-polar solvents such as oil. How about non-polar compounds? They will be insoluble in water or any other polar solvent. But they will be soluble in any other non-polar solvent such as oil. Here is a simple method to remember the solubility rule. It is like dissolves like. And we mean the words polar and non-polar when we consider like dissolves like. So, what it means is polar substances will dissolve in polar substances because they will like polar solvents just like water. Now, water is a polar substance. Just to remind you, the formula for water is Ab2x2 where x is the unshared pair of electrons. And when we have that value for x, that makes water polar. And then non-polar substances dissolve in non-polar solvents like oil. Let's look at our first problem. This is the compound CF4 carbon tetrafluoride. And our job is to find out how many polar bonds are there, is the molecule itself polar, and also will it dissolve in water or oil. So let's begin with our Lewis dot structure first. And the number of valence electrons will be 1 carbon, so it's 1 times 4, and 4 fluorines, so that will be 4 times 7, 28. When we add these together, we get 32. So we have 32 electrons as valence electron. And now, we are going to draw the Lewis dot structure for this molecule with carbon as central atom and fluorine around that. We begin with the shared pair between each of the atoms. And then we are going to put electrons around each of the fluoride to make the complete octet. After we are done with that, let's take the electron count. In this molecule, we have 8 electrons around each of the atom. And we have 4 atoms. So it is 8 times 4, which is 32. And... That's what we have. So that means Lewis dot structure is perfect. What about ABX formula? We have one atom as central. We have four atoms surrounding. And we don't have any remaining unshared electrons. So that's it. AB4. 
there is no x also we have to find out does the molecule look same all around that means it's symmetrical that makes the molecule non-polar now how about each bond for each bond we need to find out delta en and that is the difference in electronegativity for fluorine it is 4.0 and for carbon it is 2.5 when we subtract that it is 1.5 so this makes the bond a polar bond how many bonds we have there are four polar bonds but the compound is non-polar so it will not dissolve in water but it will dissolve in oil this is just to refresh your memory delta en is difference in electronegativity and using the chart we find out delta en value if the value is 1.7 or greater that is an ionic bond if the value is less than 0.3 it is non-polar bond. So that means between 0.3 and 1.7 gives us a value for polar covalent. And the easy way to remember is draw the number line and mark those delta En values. So anything beyond 1.7 will be ionic. Anything below 0.3 will be non-polar covalent and anything between these will be polar covalent bond. Let's move on to our next example. So let's begin by writing the formula and finding out valence electron. We have one carbon which will bring four electrons and we have two oxygen. So that means each oxygen brings you six electrons. Total will be 16 electrons. The Lewis dot structure will look like this, which means we have two double bonds between carbon and oxygen, and the structure will look like this. Now, for this molecule, the ABX formula will be still AB2. And you may think the molecule is symmetrical, but imagine these double bonds are like vectors. And they are actually not in exactly same plane. Also, double bond means there is an electron cloud floating on the top of that bond. Which means the bond between carbon and oxygen are polar bonds. And we have four polar bonds. So, the compound itself will be a polar compound. And it will dissolve in water. Think about soda. That's nothing but carbon dioxide dissolve in water. Let's do one more example and we have ammonia here. Find out valence electrons for ammonia. For one nitrogen it is 5 and then we have 3 hydrogen which will bring one electron each. That means the total electrons are 8. The Lewis dot structure will look like this. And if you notice we have unshared pair of electrons on that central atom. So we'll have ABX formula as AB3X. Since we have X here, you know what it means. That means the compound will be a polar compound. If it's a polar compound, it will be soluble in water. And how about the polarity of the bonds? We are going to find out that by delta EN. And delta EN will be difference between the electronegativity of two elements, nitrogen and hydrogen, and that gives you value 0.9. That means those are polar bonds. So we got three polar bonds in ammonia. So look at this. Using two principles, we were easily able to find out if the covalent molecule is polar or nonpolar. Also, we could predict its solubility in water and oil. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.